It's my sleep. Uh, we're Jungle Cringe Beats. Australia's plug to the best lists in the country, or the worst lists in the country, depending on Hunted. you. And if uh, you haven't checked out our videos before, let's go check out our top tracks and also our honorable mentions. Yep. So you know that this is going to be the best shit of the motherfucking year for us personally. Top 10 right here. This is, to me, it's the most enjoyable, most listened back. True. There's the, the, exactly, that's the thing. Like, there'll be some that'll be quality that you go back to that's exactly what you want. But there's also some that, like, you know that probably shouldn't be there, but like it's just it just represents something for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's hit it. Number ten, you go. Oh, I'm gonna go, mate. Right? I'm gonna go so hard. Number ten. Oh man, it's, it's just so hard. I'm just switching shit as I go. <laughs> Frank Casino, something from me. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh. Yeah, I've just I've, I've listened to him around the very start of the year. In my, you know, Spotify gives you playlists. Mm -hmm. And then I just found him randomly through that, a track called New Coop. And then I, there was a track with him in Asa Ferg. And I was like, oh shit, this man uses autotune in a very different way. And I saw that he just dropped an album. So it was just kind of like, it just happened. I'm like, okay. And legit, there's not a bad track in this album. Uh, his style is very different to most other rappers in the, in the form of trap. Uh, super catchy. Also a bit of storytelling on there. Not only does he, but he also has tracks in here where he raps a lot as well than the autotune. And I really think that he's a really special artist. I really hope he blows the fuck up. Legit, he's, he's incredible. I don't know what more to say. I just, I just replayed this album a lot right. throughout the whole year. Fair enough. The whole year, back and forth. For me, the, all these albums I just want to mention, yeah. I could justify them being the best album of the year. Every all, sing, all of them? Every single one. I could justify and I've never have felt this before. This is very hard for me. I will admit, the, like I said, the, the 8 to 13-ish, always changing, and I'm probably going to be changing as they go. Number 10. <sighs> J.I.D. DiCaprio 2. Oh, she made it! She made it. I had to. A couple of words, to, for those who don't know, a couple of words to describe this, this album. Get on my dick. <laughs> Get on my dick. Get on my dick. Swift. Clean. Balanced. Deft. Flow. Bruh. To me, this was a hybrid balance of hard-hitting lyrical deafness, the first half, and with the second half providing oh, almost a blend of a, like a soul, R&B, a slower uh, tempo, while continuing to stay lyrically strong and engaging. Uh, I don't know, the second half is what some people had a problem with. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted the first half to continue, and I understand this and would like this too. However, <laughs> I grew to appreciate this balance, which is why I describe it as balanced, and I think what J.I.D. showcases is he, how he can provide variation in his vocal performances. Mm. How he, he can be so deft and creative with his flows through frequent vocal switches to keep the project extremely engaging. Every feature is on point. There's not a single feature I would remove. Even and, black? Yeah, no, nah, even black now. I, really, I like black. I'm fucking with it. Mm -hmm. The album shows how much more refined and polished he is and why I think he's going to stand on his own uh, in, this, in this industry of saturated rappers and why he, I think he's got next, man. I think J.I.D.'s got next. Damn, I'm with you there. I That's believe it. he's up there. Number nine, uh, Amine 1.5. Did you think it was going to be there? 1.5. Didn't he? Damn, okay. Yeah, no, nah, I know you're fucking with Amine heavy. Yeah. Uh, we didn't react... Amazingly to this in a way. No, we didn't. Four levels of filler. A lot of it was filler. Just, I went back to this a lot and there's probably only one track in the album I don't really like. It was my sort of feel good album of the year. Tracks like Reel It In, of course, made my top tracks. Uh, Blackjack, Shine, Fuck Man. Just I, just, I would just always go back to this album and I'd just play it the whole way through in the car, at work, and it just put me in a really good mood. This is what Amino does to you. Yeah, the same thing with sort of Caroline. I didn't like Caroline at first. I'm not sorry, not Caroline. Um, good for you. I didn't like Good for You at first, but I went back to it and I enjoyed nearly all the albums. Sorry, I'm live. Amazing. So this album represented just a really good headspace for me this year. So that's why a lot of people probably went like I will admit there's definitely albums that came out like Denzel Curry's Taboo, Mick Jenkins' Peace of Man that I believe are better structurally and storytelling for an album in every fucking way. But this album just represents a better nostalgic and mind space presence for me. Fair enough. Which is why it's there. Well said. Number nine. Again, this could be the best album. Saba, Care For Me. Yeah. 
I'm with you there. This album was self-reflective, real, dynamic, a breath of fresh air, and honest. Mm. Uh, I think he stepped out of his comfort zone here, experimenting with different tonalities and really was quite vulnerable on this project. Mm. He took what was good about the bucket list project and built on <coughs> it to create from good to great. Mm. And I got a couple quotes here. I think his ability to step outside himself and storytell in a way that speaks to the individual, to relatable, is what really made this special. And another quote, uh, Care For Me is a really special album. Saba really translates himself into his music. I can hear every emotion in his inflection and delivery. And it makes a lot of moments of this album uh, absolutely like, like gut-wrenching and gut-punching and really hits you hard. Saba. Damn. Give a man a clap. You better be clapping your computers right now. On your computers or phone. Just clap them together. Clap you, clap you. That's your monitor, bro. Is that computer? Fuck it. Number That's eight. Uh, J. Cole, K.O.D. Really think this has changed. The way that he evolved this year was the involvement that we didn't see in For Your Eyes Only. I believe For Your Eyes Only was a really good album, but it was missing that growth and involvement. And we get it here. And he steps into a scene as well where... The drug, the drug use in the hip-hop scene is so huge. And I think he tackles it in a way which is definitely helping a lot of younger rappers that may look up to him or people gone through it change the direction they live their lives. I really think this was a smart album that was released at a time that needed to be done by bigger artists. And he just tackles it in a really smart way with the way he uses his flows, uh, with, with the way he uses the album art as well. Like, um, And there wasn't a bad track in this album. I think the tracks I wasn't really huge on, I grew to really like, especially the... The Kill Edward features, I thought right. it was a really good uh, change of pace and also yeah. a really cool direction. Uh, ATM's incredible. And even the way he ends it with that freestyle, pretty much thing at the end. Is it 1959? Shit, I know. Oh, calling out the, like, the industry, yeah, the rappers. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Super dope way to end it. Uh, Kevin's heart. Yeah, really? Bro. Yeah, that's, that was... Like, I love like, how I did that. Like I just said, like everything about J. Cole this year from his involvement, even on like Tribe, the feature on Buster's album... Uh, the feature on Off D's, J. Cole has had an incredible year and he really deserves to be here and I think deserves to be mentioned a lot more in this year because I'm, I'm not hearing him a lot this year. This has been such a big year. People are, people are overshadowing and I don't think he needs to be. It's been a great year for J. Cole. Number eight for me was, I think, one of the best up-and-coming female artists under 21. Jorah Smith. Lost and found. You know how I knew that would be there? Because she wasn't on your honorable mentions. No shit. <laughs> I was like, is she going to be there? 100%. Conceptually cohesive, delicate, pure, gorgeous, heart-wrenching. As I said before, as I said in our honorable mentions, I relate to this more, more uh, than... You said, you said something pretty interesting. I said that because of my age, everything that she's talking about, it took me three listens to be like, oh shit, everything she's talking about i went through at a younger age not now which is why i'm not resonating with it as much now right i'm five years younger i'm in the middle of a long-term relationship uh, I, I kind of like uh sorry guys <laughs> sorry you'll have to call her up and see what you can do <laughs> um i can relate to this on a deeper level and connect with it and i think i'm so impressed that she wrote this from as young as 16 years of age man up to 20. Because I know that if I was that age, I wouldn't be able to articulate the way she does. Absolutely. And especially with a voice like hers, the emotion that she pours through it, man. And like... that's what it shows. It shows emotional maturity, mm. which is very impressive for someone at, at that young age. Um, but it also shows like this juvenile immaturity at the same time. Like, you know, dealing with all these, these new relationships and, and people. Uh, I, I do get kind of Adele, Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen vibes and inspirations, which, which is really nice because I didn't really listen to those artists that much. Um, and I think, just think it's a beautiful, honest depiction of what it's like to maneuver through pain, uh, beauty, and suffering of, of love and loss. Mm. It's beautiful, man. She's beautiful. She is. How old is she? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we kids like. Shared, shared Billy Eilish. <laughs> God damn, what a great year for me. Uh, seven, I've got Brockhampton with Iridescence. Uh... I know that a lot of other people didn't like it as much the Saturation series. I personally think it's their best album. I think their, their growth on here is incredible. They tackle so many different genres, more so than what they used to. Uh, the Lack of a Mirror, 
does kind of hurt me a lot. Obviously, I know why it's there and I respect that and I understand it, but I would love for Amir to really focus on getting into a better and coming back to Brockhampton. I would love for that to happen because I still feel like he's really close to you guys because you've been through a lot together. But despite that, you guys all put on a phenomenal performance, and especially Jova. Jova steps the fuck up on this album. Jova's verses and teamwork with on the production on this is, is incredible. Like, fuck me, man. <sighs> yeah, I didn't think I saw you live as well. Thank you very much for, uh, for Dom for hitting me up and letting me go. That concert was incredible. You did your thing. And like I said, like, like tracks like Tape, Javert, Fabric, San Marcos, New Orleans, like, there's just tracks all over this fucking album that I just constantly go back to. The only reason it's not higher up is because there's a few filler tracks on here. Mm. That's the only reason. Everything else, like, individual tracks, they're just like, they blow my mind. They blow my fucking mind. Brockhampton, I'm loving your fucking growth. <coughs> this album was hard to put here. Number seven. Oh, fuck, it was hard. Is it Rosalia? <sighs> it's not Rosalia. It's, um... I mean, she's there, though. This album could easily be considered the best album of the year. Like you said, all your 10 could be, bro. No, but this really. I'm talking about Lupe Fiasco's oh, Drogas sh Wave. Oh, shit. You forgot about that? It was in my honorable mentions, but I forgot to say it. You didn't even say it. <sighs> too late. It's too late now. It, 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 oh, holy shit. You, you're not even top 10. Wow. Um, or is it? Am I trolling? It could be. I don't think so, though. Look, man. I, where I was, to paint the picture, I listened to this album for the first time doing some hikes in Vancouver. And it's a long album, so I was able to listen to the whole thing. So that's where my kind of mentality and like environment, I listened to it around. Mm. And it was pretty cool because that, this is a very vivid album. Mm. Um, Lupe paints a, it's a lot of storytelling. It's a lot of, a lot of uh, conceptual complexity that I'm still unpacking and I still fucking don't know. Um, is a lot to digest in one hour and 40 goddamn minutes of, of music. Lot. But I enjoy pretty much every single track from... And I think um, it's probably the best uh, storytelling album of the year. Yeah. I mean, second would be Royce the Five Nine with Booker Ryan. But I feel like... Because I've only listened to this album twice, which is probably why I didn't mention a lot. Because once you said, it is a very long album. And because it's near the end of the year, I've been going back to a lot more other stuff to make sure what I want to put in there. But uh, for my two listens, because the second listen, I put up all the lyrics for every track. And bro, the amount of shit he mentions, which I'm, so like, much I'm, like, being said. I'm like, how do you know this? How do you make this like, this on Tondre? Yeah, like, yeah. so many times, so many times, this man is really switched it's off. It's very thematically strong, especially <coughs> the first tr six tracks where he's storytelling uh, around black, uh, black rights, slavery, and things around that. And, but the, the, the album is, is about a group of slaves that jumped off a slave ship, transporting them from Africa. Mm. Uh, the slaves did not drown instead somehow managed to live under the sea and spent the rest of their underwater existence sinking slave ships that's what I read correct me if I'm wrong so it's maneuvering through that I could speak for the next 10 minutes about this I have notes for days breaking down the tracks I won't why not because um, we can't sit here for an hour I don't want to sit here for an hour um, if you want to see it hit him up and he'll send you a, a naked video but I, yeah this is I'm so impressed. Lupe's is a top 10 artist for me. Oh yeah, and when I get more time, especially when I'm traveling, I will go back to this album more and we'll sink into it more because I really believe I'll, I'll love it just as much as you do. I, I'm, I just, I don't even know what to say because there's so much. There's so much and I'm so impressed. Damn. Oh, fuck. Number six. Kitsy Ghost, Kitsy Ghost. Kitsy Ghost. Uh, there's not a bad track on this album. It's flawless. Every track's so different. Every track is done amazingly. We haven't heard Kanye rap this good in a very fucking long time. We haven't heard Kid Cudi sounds good in a very long time. What more can you say? Uh, honestly, it's not higher up because I just didn't listen to it as much as the albums that are above this. Fair enough. And like you said, these all albums are all incredible. Uh, each track sort of represents a different emotion as well. Like I said, Reborn takes you really back, makes you think a lot, gets you quite emotional, whereas tracks like Fourth Dimension just have you sort of upbeat. bouncing. Yeah. Feel the love. Makes you sort of more smile and have a bit of fun with it. Same with um, Free. Kind of get a bit silly with it. Like each sort of track tackles like, because this track, this album does tackle mental health quite a lot as well because they've both struggled with a lot which is kind of why they came back together to help each other go through this shit. Because obviously Kid Cudi and Kanye West had some troubles with their relationship. So this album just represents 
a lot of beauty in that manner, but also tackles a lot of different emotions. And I think, like I said, it's flawless and easily could be one. Incredible. Well said. Incredible. Uh, this one. <laughs> you guys reviewed this while I was away. You didn't like it really much. It's uh, Black, number six, East Atlanta Love Letter. Oh, God. Bro. I don't know if you still, you still feel the same about it. Yeah, I don't like it. Holy <laughs> shit. I love this fucking album so much. The best thing about this album is J. Cole's feature on Pretty Little Fears. See, that's, that's insulting to me, but it's opinions, right? It's fucking it's fine. Um, just like an asshole, bro. Right, right, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh, so I was traveling in New York when they reviewed this, and this was kind of the... It, I say it because it's kind of like a theme track to our travels. Mm. Um, and we both, my partner and I, really loved it. Um, buttery, smooth texture, hypnotizing. Did you fuck to it? Um, no, because we couldn't play the album on Alexa because it's not our house. Uh, sorry, it's a weird tangent. They I, I won't explain that. <laughs> uh, sorry for breaking every it. Every fucking track I loved. Even Stan? Every track, bro. I couldn't disagree with you more. That's okay, right? That's, that's, that's I, we've good. never had, I don't remember the last time we had such a oh, polar opposite. And if he is Stan, Stan. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Holy fuck, man. From start to finish, it's so pleasant and enjoyable. And time flies by when I listen to this. I could listen to this on oh, yeah. repeat all day. Time flies so slowly. <laughs> it's extremely sonically and thematically cohesive. And the transitions between each track are very fluid and watery. Um, I think Black, um, I was impressed and I cannot wait. I'm so disappointed I missed your performance in Melbourne. But... Mm. Um, I really like this polarity right now. I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I made it for you. I'm glad it represents such special moments for you overseas. Absolutely. Now what it represents. But I still firmly believe it is a very average album. That's okay. Number five. You can five. do better. Number five. Top five right now, son. Top five, y'all. We're getting there. Number five. Uh, no Name. Room 25. Okay. Uh, once again, we reviewed it the exact same day we reviewed the Black Album. Exact same day. They came out the exact same time. And very opposite attraction. I loved it upon first listen, start to finish. And I love it even... Can you escort this man out the room? And I love it even more now. Just the way that this brings like Chicago soul, jazz, hip hop, and all these other elements infused in there. The features are all beautiful, but really minimalistic. That's what I love about this album. I love when albums use features in a way where they don't overshadow the artist. They're just kind of there. Uh, Black Sportation, fucking Ace. There are just so many incredible moments in this album. And it's not, it's not an album besides Ace. It's not an album where you can kind of go to a track. Once you put it at the start, you just like, I have to listen to the whole album in full. And it's not too long where you don't get a bit bored. Like you just be like, you know those sort of albums? Very similar like Kiss City Ghost. Like, you'd be like, oh shit, I gotta You just play the first track. It's like, I can't leave. I can't go to work. I gotta listen to the whole album. I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna right, be late. right, right, right. But that's sort of shit, man. No shit. That's a good point. No name. You absolutely killed it. I believe this album is as good as Telephone. It's funny because Telephone got number five as well for really? 20, 2016. That's so interesting. What yeah, so I, I don't put them above or below each other because they're both so different. Yep. So I'm really loving you as an artist. You're incredible. You're incredible. Bro. This number five was fucking shit. Bro, what a hard year. This shit, has been a great bro. year for music, man. I want to give this number one. It's essential, striking, boundless. Let me guess. Expressive. Okay. Gorgeous. It's Rosalia. It's Rosalia. Yeah. El Mal Correra. I'm saying that. If I'm saying that. Right. Malamente. She blew us, especially me, away with I this wish album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking masiquito. What is it? Masiquito. Masiquist? Mas 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 I can't. <laughs> Whatever it is. This is um, such a, a, high, a beautiful hybrid brand of flamenco laid with inventive striking production. Mm. It's like the new and old world smashed together Bruh. and create this kind of grandiose uh, sense of drama through her music. I think Rosalia has really done that uh, very well. Uh, but it's still personal and revealing. And once you look at the lyrics and uncover what the Spanish means, and you guys have been phenomenal at helping us explain it. You have. Thank um, you. Breaking down the different chapters and, and the, the journey that this album is. Um, it's been very helpful. Thank you. 
And even though we don't understand Spanish, Rosalia can still capture us. Mm. How, that's, that's, look, if you're doing that for non-Spanish speakers, you're doing something right. Uh, it doesn't, in, her speaking a different language doesn't inhibit our experience. <sighs> And just the way she uses her vocals, she just really, when she hits certain notes or the way she just uses it, like, it just hits you right at home, man. You can feel your body quiver all over. Absolutely, quiver. She, that's a good she word. She legit just can just hit you in ways that no other person can. And that's, that's reflected <clears throat> by each chapter. Each chapter is a different, like, emotional roller coaster. A story tells how she interacts with these different emotions. Um... Pause. That's it. It's fucking amazing. Rosalia. Because <laughs> I, I had a critique here, but I don't agree with it anymore. <laughs> so that's why I, I, I omitted it. Um, it's been a minute. I'm so impressed. Fuck. It's amazing. My boy. Uh, number four. What is it? I'm not really hyping them up this time, am I? Shit, I think it's because I'm really tired. What is it? <laughs> uh, it's Gracie Hopkins. For everyone around Rage, SO1. I think it's season one, bro. Yeah, I could. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. That's my boy. Uh, Many times. Holy shit. Like half a dozen times. That's my shit. Uh, my fourth most played album of the year. Hence why it's number four. Shit, man. He's from France, I believe. And I love the way that he mixes kind of like French vocals with his English vocals as well. Uh, a lot of beat switches in this album. His singing's incredible. His rapping incredible. I just, I just love when you hear a fresh new artist and there's something about their voice that you just click with. You're like, this is something I haven't heard before. And then you just keep hearing and hearing them. Like, fuck, this, this, this guy's doing shit that is just so fresh to me. And as a, as a, as a listener, I'm always craving that freshness. It's like hearing... Chance the Rapper on 10 Day again for the very first time right. on Acid Rap. That's, I was like, I've never heard anything like this before. That's how I felt with this album right here. And it's not only this album, it's also his last album as well, which have connections. Like the album before this was released last year was all about tackling different phobias. And it was, he would just tackle, and the, the album before that was leading to this one. It's all about tackling all these phobias and becoming someone that doesn't fear anything anymore. And that's what this whole album is about. Like getting to a stage where he's not fearing anything. He's tackling all these other emotions. It's a... Uh, it's incredible. And the balance is one of the biggest things about this album. From the things that bang, the things that are slower. And even when he did his concert tour, like there's moments in this album where he like, he really fits the theme where he kind of wakes up in a hospital and he has like the gown on. At all his concerts, he had the hospital gown on. Oh. So he really keeps to the schematics of this album. And I really fucking love it. I really recommend checking him out. He is fucking incredible. How dare you, Zach? Uh, sorry, sorry. How dare you? I need to fuck now. Crazy Hopkins, y'all. Motherfucking amazing artist, yo. Whew. Stay on the lookout. Getting yeah, fucking musically tired. <coughs> Number four. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of people won't know this artist. Uh, I, this is thanks to the most unruly for this one. Um, I would not have heard this without him. Deezy Brown, Judith. Oh, man. I didn't know this would be that high up. Whoa. This just gives me why it is because it's a version of... Kanye West, My Beautiful Dark Toasted Fantasy to okay. me. Okay. So that, that's, that's kind of mm-hmm. the, what it reminds me of, mm-hmm. except with a lesser, a, a more unknown artist, not to at that higher quality. Um, is this your number four? This is my number four. I know what your top three is. Fucking, <laughs> fucking hold, you hold your horses. Bro. I know what it is. Hold your fucking horses. <coughs> the production is incredibly mature and such of a high quality for someone so young. It's so polished and sophisticated and cohesive. It's it's a beautiful blend of genres that it wears its inspirations on its sleeves. Yes, mm. Kanye West, Travis Scott influences. Um, and it's really interesting because I remember you hit me up and you were just like, have you heard this? And I was like, I actually had heard it because yes. I had the same thing, it appeared on my Spotify and I was the same, I heard that one track and I was like, fuck, I gotta check out the album and the whole album was, production was crazy. Exactly, but it was so good for me. I've mm. gone back to it so many times uh, it's very similar to the Gracie Hopkins for me. Right. Artists that no one's familiar with that you just find randomly and then you just, you just stick to them. Like he, like you said, he had that he had that he had that factor for you. Exactly. I'm just I'm just, I was like, whoa, how is this artist so good yet so unknown? Mm-hmm. How did he create this 
as his first project. I assume it's his like, first project. How do you have the money? How do you get the features? How do you, how, where's the hunger come from? Where, where, why, why does no motherfucker hear this person? And it, as well, it's not just the production. It, thematically, it's like, I'm um, unpacking it, listening to the interview. It's like depicting a battle of lust for superficiality and fame while contrasting it, like the disdain for it. So what I mean by that is like, you have this, you're chasing kind of this, the lust of fame. And at the same time, you're like, you're recognizing that th this is fleeting. This is, this is meaningless. This is not mm. where meaning comes from in life. And I think it's, oh. damn man. Listen to it, bro. Number three. Number three. Chicago representee, Saba, care for me. Yeah, no shit. Um, this was number one for a while. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The, uh, the top four, including Grace Hopkins, were all number one at one stage. Yeah. They kept it intertwining on and off up until the very last week where I changed it. The very last week. Actually, but then he was number one float. You know what? Fuck everything I'm talking about. <laughs> Saba, care for me. Uh, start to finish production. Flawless. I, mean, I think it's very similar to Kids See Ghost in a manner. There's not a bad track or moment on this album. It's so experimentally perfect. Like you said, I think I honestly think that what you said was perfect about it being a... The bucket list was great, good, but he made the same sort of thing, but made it great. I think that was the perfect way of explaining it. And I just loved his storytelling on here, the vocal pitches, just everything. Like, And even seeing him live is one of the best performances of the year. I got to have a chat with him. You can check out our concert review. Incredible. Uh, I truly believe it deserves to be here and it could easily just as well be the best album of the year. Amazing Saba, you're an amazing artist. Well said, well said. Number three, I'm not gonna get you to guess it because I don't actually fucking I know what it. they are. Can I, can, I just, can I whisper to you right now? Can I, can I whisper it to you? Okay, so that's gonna be... Actually, we don't even have to include it, you have to whisper it. Oh yeah, true. Just <laughs> for fucking edit it in. <laughs> <laughs> We're retarded. All right. Number three. Okay. Silver the cue. <laughs> <laughs> You know, maybe we do include it. Include it, actually. Okay, include it. I don't know who was gonna. But let's include it. We can include it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Silver Q, apologies in advance. Yeah. We listed this very early on. This is one of the albums that stuck with us the whole way. It's also one of my favorite reactions of the year too. Right. This is guy is not relatively known, but he was able to drop an honest, ambitious, challenging, mm. inventive, and emotive project that oh. impressed us beyond expectation upon first listen from florida and not only that he released an amazing mixtape as well in the very same fucking year yeah oh. the production is it's like a variety of smooth instrumentation lacy piano violin engaging drum patterns really well done on that front the content very self-aware reflective and conscious and sylvan the, the concept is like weaving in and out like it's a it's like an aa meeting so you're sitting down and you're bearing your soul uh, and you're your uh, deep insecurities and thoughts about the world. Mm. And so he weaves in and out of these like mini interviews and conversations. Um, like mm. I'd say like a perfect five-man weave, right? Those are no basketball, right? <laughs> it just reminds me of like a five-man weave. It's so like everyone's doing their job, but they'd like every, the timing, everything is perfect. And exactly. no one can read it. You can't counter it because of how perfect it is. Exactly. And so it explores these 12 steps to becoming a better person. And it isn't like cliche or corny about it. Um, it's, it's... Like it's about becoming like a better person and how he maneuvers through it. And he uses just clever wordplay, exquisite metaphors to paint this picture. He's showing us rap is and has been his, his hustle and his new hustle. Mm. He's flow. He's able to switch it up. He, he knows how to keep it creative, when to slow it down, when to mm. pick it up. That's it, man. Sylvan Q, man. Man. Number two. Sylvan Q. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies in advance. Let me just go on another rant about it. Hey, is there anything I didn't say that you want to add? Because I'm sure you agree oh, with I wasn't all. even listening. No, I was. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Uh, bruh. We, like you said, we reacted so strongly to it. There isn't a bad moment. And what I love about this album, did you did you mention the in-between skits and what they represent? Did I mention it just yeah. then? Uh, not specifically, no, because there's so many of them. Just That's emotions. I, I just feel like it was just sort of... I just love the concept of like just being around these people and just being so open. And then basically the openness of so many people leading into a track fully about those emotions. I just feel like he tackles it in a very aware manner and just reflects on it in a way that is just so easily to relate to and also to help yourself grow. Like, yeah. There's many times you'll hear a track and you'll be like, fuck.
but how do I change myself? I get what you're feeling, but I don't know what to, how to act upon this. Whereas listening to this album, it's so easy for, for me to like really act upon what I'm hearing and kind of see a bit more growth in myself, which is why it's so high up because this album really helped me, I believe, be a better person this year and really sort of be a bit more emotionally intact with myself this year. And not only that, it fucking bangs. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. I think you said it really well with how he's really smart with knowing when to be a bit more softer, when to be a bit more harder, depending on the, not only what the track's about, but the energy that it brings and represents. So, Silver Lecue has a, an absolutely incredible year, man. An amazing mixtape, uh, if not the best album of the year, and deserves props. We fuck with you, Sylvan. Holy shit. Number two. A couple words to describe this. Minimalist. Wordplay. Dark and heavy. Sharp, dense, gritty. Damn, I got the two and one fucked up. The last word to describe it? Yuck. Damn, I fucked up the two and one. It's alright. It's close enough. It's close enough. <laughs> Man, Pusha T's Daytona. I could easily put this number one the same way. I could interchange them. Yeah, it's all of them. It's that. It's that it's all, of year. It's all number one. A really good year. Um, the production is so strong. The lyricism is just as strong. Pusher and Ye's pro- Pusher and Ye's production flows like gu- like butter. It's butter, man. Bruh. It's so beautiful. It yeah. is street, high level luxury rap at its finest. Yeah, you know what works. He does. It's extremely cohesive, and the transitions are seamless. Bruh. Lyrically, he has a way to enunciate his words that you you can feel every single word he's saying. Mm-hmm. The only low light on the album originally for me was Hard Piano, like you. Still is. Right? Legit. Be top 10 for me if Hard Piano was better. Because it just feels like it's, it's missing this hard-hitting, powerful production that all the other tracks, tra- tracks had. Mm. But now, I don't even mind. I'm cool. I can, I can live with it. Right? The, the, it's so solid. So tight-knit. It, I love it, man. Pusha T's top 10 artist for me. So good. My number one, you already know what it is. Mac Miller Swimming. No oh, shit. Um, I'm, it's an emotional album for me now. Especially now. I have one question. Did it ch- how did it change after his death, after his passing? Did it change? What does it change? Honestly, it didn't change at all what it represented. Mm-hmm. But it changed a bit more because knowing that he wasn't going to be here anymore, releasing any more music made it a bit more emotional for me. Because yeah. it kind of represent that duality... Oh, sorry, his finality of it. Oh, right, yeah. Yep. Um, but if you go to... It's funny, I checked out my... There's a way that you can check your Spotify most played tracks of the year. And after Student One and uh, Reggie Snow, it's just like Mac Miller's album. The whole album. It's like top four tracks in Mac Miller's album. I played it to death in every moment. Just like hurt feelings. What's the use? Self-care. Ladders. Small worlds. 2009, even the tracks I didn't mention, like, it's just such an emotional album. And, like, it's just, like, it's crazy. This would still be number one, despite him passing or, like, if he didn't pass, this would still be number one. Because it was number one for a time where he, where before he passed. Like, when we first reviewed this album, it was number one then. I was like, this is incredible. And I just didn't stop listening to it. It just, it's a really emotional album for me. It's also helped me a lot this year in terms of, Growing, dealing with depression. I've dealt with depression a lot this year. So it's helped me sort of focus a lot on, like focusing more on the positives and even not being positive, just learning to sort of cope with that in a way and still be able to live on and deal with everything else that you're going through. Like the way that he's struggled and the way that he goes through shit is very similar to the way that I do shit, despite the drug taking, of course. But yeah, incredible, man. Incredible. Well said. In peace. Uh, number one for me, as you all can guess right now, Kanye West, Kid Cudi, Kid C, Ghosts. Incredible. I don't have a lot of notes on this album, to be honest. Uh, I just, this is magnificent. Just gotta feel it. And emotional. It's feel. You right? gotta feel the love! Yeah, good one. Almost every track I come back to this album with, I'm struck with the similar emotion that I felt the first time we listened to it. Mm. And that's special, right? That's longevity. That's, yeah, that's quality. Yeah, man. <sighs> Everything from the, the production to the lyrical content mm. to the way it's delivered to the transitions. 
as a whole package, this is an incredible album. Definitely. Um, that I don't even go back to that often because it's like a special thing for me. No, I'm exactly the same. I legit, I go like when it first came out, I listened to it a bit, but it got to the stage was like, I don't want to overplay this. I don't want to spoil it. Because of how short and right. how beautiful it is. And it's great because what happened is I would randomly, maybe a song would come on randomly in a playlist and I'd go, oh, I've got to listen to the album again or maybe I just, I just feel like it. And I'd put it on start to finish and I'd feel exactly the same as before. Like I just get into this, this state of like euphoria. Right. I and just being that. like, like I said, remember how I said each track represents sort of a different emotion in a way. And I sort of each enter a different state of euphoria with each of those tracks. And I get to the very end with the montage, you get to the end of it, I'm like, holy shit, this album is so incredible. It's, it's, it's like this fine dine, five star Michelin star restaurant. You, you, can't, you don't go there every night. You don't want to go there every night. But when you mm-hmm. do go, oh man, sit back and relax and enjoy that special experience. Really good way of putting it. Because yeah, some albums... You can't play the shit out of them. No, it's weird. Like, like Illmatic, that. you can play the shit out of but then there are some other amazing albums where if you overplay them, it, you're just not getting the value from it, in my opinion. It's real weird like that. Any, anyway, that's um, that's our top 10 albums of the year, man. Top 10, man. Put your top 10s below. Right? Put your below. And if you didn't know any about artists and you're intrigued, check them out. Absolutely. The Crazy Hopkins, the... Your number three, your number four. I can't remember. DZ, DZ, Br- DZ Brown. Judith. Yep. Do this. Check that shit out. Exactly. So on the queue. Hopefully this gives you guys an opportunity to take some value in and get exposed to some new music and go on some different journeys. Yeah. This was this was a hard year. The, the hardest for me. All of these are top number one albums <sighs> for me. Mick Jenkins was in the ten today. But you know what? Oh, he moved. He moved and I'm still glad he had an incredible year too. It's been a it's been an incredible year for music. We are truly blessed in our day and age of hip hop and music in general. Really <sighs> fucking blessed. Fuck me. We Jungle Beats. It's this week. <laughs> we got the awards coming soon, y'all. Stay That's right. Jungle Beats Awards, y'all. Got a new segment. You're going to dig it. Stay tuned, man. Stay tuned, y'all. Shit, son. Shit, son. Yeah, bro. Shit, son.